<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and here we're going to be performing a mod on a system that I've actually never modded or really messed with before. Right here we have a Game Boy Color. Now, I've actually never owned one of these consoles right here, and it is not going to be mine. I'll go ahead and explain what's going on here. So, my first console in the Game Boy line was actually a, like, glacier colored, like that glacier purple kind of transparent um, Game Boy Advance, which I remember I got it, took it home, uh, went under my covers with the lights off, turned it on, could not see anything, had no idea that backlights were a thing and that the Game Boy Advance did not have one. So that was pretty disappointing at the time. But either way, we have this Game Boy Color right here that we're going to be installing a nice little mod on. Now, there is some, I guess, history to this, even though I had just picked this up. I did buy it on eBay um, shortly at the time of recording this here. I bought it on eBay, it seems to be refurbished and everything, and just to make sure it works, I did put batteries in there. This is my own copy of uh, Pokemon Yellow. And we can turn this thing on. Let's check this out. There we go. Seems to be working just fine. So thankfully, it's all working well. I don't have to worry about, you know, <laughs> I, I, I know that it's working before I take it all apart. Now, I got this Game Boy here specifically because this is actually, again, it's not going to be mine. It is actually going to be a present for my girlfriend. So by the time this video comes out, it is going to be in her possession. But I am going to be recording this video a while before just because it's going to be a bit until I give it to her. Just have to line it up for a certain present and such. But getting the work done now on here. Either way, her history with this thing is that she actually had a Game Boy Color in Kiwi Green, or I guess Kiwi is just this name, growing up. Now, she didn't have it for too long because I guess apparently, if I remember correctly, the story for hers goes that she was at a playground, she had the Game Boy, she put it down somewhere, and then it got stolen. So what I did was I ended up buying a Kiwi Green Colored Game Boy Color. Now, on top of that, that's our working one. This is the kit that we're going to be installing. Technically, we're going to be reshelling this, so I did double check with this here. I actually bought the same color of the console and the kit, just because when I bought the kit, I didn't know if it would be just the front right here, or if it would be the entire shell. But it looks like it's going to be the entire shell. Now, the shell from what I see is not exactly the same, like you can see right there from the serial. Um, yeah, like the, the barcode and such there, or the serial number, that's what I was saying. Um, it's not the exact same, it looks like, but this will be fine still. Now, even just opening this up, we're not just going to be reshelling this. That is going to be a part of the process here. Here we go, how's this looking? All right, that's looking all good so far. Oh, and awesome. It actually comes with one of these stickers as well too, so I'll be able to apply that. Comes with all the tools that we'll need to put it together, or take it apart, put it together, and then it comes with some nice new rubber pads here. So that's going to be real cool. Now I'm not just going to be doing a simple reshell, because obviously even here, the shell on this really doesn't look all too bad, thankfully, so I think I'm actually going to keep this one around. I'd say this is still good. I mean, it's like scuffed up and everything. It has some scratches, but the seller, I'm pretty happy with the job that they did on here, refurbishing this. No, 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 no. We're not just going to be doing that. We're also going to be installing a backlight kit. Now, this is an IPS display. Now, typically, you can even, if you want to, you can actually take off the front panel here and you can kind of cut into it and modify it on the inside. It looks like the one I got is a pre-trimmed one, so I'm going to have to do less manual work on there. And then it looks like there's going to be three wires that I'm going to have to solder up. Uh, I think even two of them might be optional. It's just for the on-screen display stuff, but I want to fully maximize this. So that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to go ahead, get this all installed. Hopefully it's going to be a good time. And we're going to get to take this thing apart. All right, so right here we have the Game Boy, of course, and I also wanted to take apart the kit here so we could see what we're looking at. So just taking a look at this here, I think this is really nice how they, um, put it in this plastic casing and all that. I definitely want to reuse this. Uh, now this I end up getting from a seller on eBay here. 
and I want to say this is about, at the time I'm recording this, it was like $80 or so for not only this kit, but also like everything here, like all the mod tools themselves. So like these, the actual shell and everything, and then this here. So let's see what we got in store for us. We could even see if we could do some of our work outside of here as well. Now right here, here we go. It's looking like, cool. It looks like this is going to be more for the uh, light sensor itself, because you'll be able to do that and it can like, you know, adjust from what I'm seeing. And there is a couple of wires right here for our start and select. I think there was one more as well too that we can optionally solder to, uh, but we'll see what we're doing on that. We'll go ahead, get all of this opened up. Let's see. Oh, there we go. That's nice. So actually look at that. So here is the original screen and here's the new screen that we're going to be installing because, well, the cover here. So this is glass, but on top of that, um, yeah, it definitely feels like glass. So on top of that as well, uh, the screen itself is bigger because the screen that we're going to be installing is bigger. So we're going to get, uh, you know, a nicer, bigger, brighter screen. So that's going to be really cool. And then of course we have the screen itself that we're going to be installing. Very cool. So those are all the parts that we're going to be installing here. For now, I'm going to place these ones back in. Just being careful with this as well too. Don't want to damage anything. And we're just going to pop this back into place. There we go. Now, this is going to be the main driving factor behind everything. So let's see what comes in this little bag. Looks like we have this. Now I've preemptively looked at some screenshots and such and just, you know, some installation diagrams. So it looks like this here is gonna go kind of on the back of the screen. This kind of gonna, you know, this ribbon's gonna connect to the front where everything needs to. And, oh, here we go. We actually have three wires. All right, and these ones are it looks like they are pre-cut and pre-tinned, so that is very nice, just nice and convenient for us. And this should be our sensor here. There we go, awesome, real cool. Let me just get all these wires out. <laughs> so I was just checking here, these two are the exact same length, so it's not like I have to, you know, pick one over the other. We got this little black one here, and then of course the sensor, as I pointed out multiple times. So I was wanting to look at this here because I'd like to do some work outside of the case. I'm going to solder in the wires for both start and select, and I believe there is one more somewhere here. So actually on the selling listing here, so there's gonna be four things we're gonna solder in here. It looks like we have these two wires we're going to put in. Uh, this sensor is going to go over to where it says TCH. So we're gonna kinda plop it in like that. And then this wire is going to solder onto power right here. So yet again, what I like to do is get the soldering here out of the way. That way I don't have this all like installed in the console itself. And I would be like, you know, messing with it in a tiny setting. Here I'm going to have everything available. So this will be easier. All right, so I've just turned on my soldering iron here. We're going to start getting all this situated. And this should hopefully be easy enough. I haven't messed with one of these before, but this is looking cool so far. So I think uh, it's almost good to go. And once it is, we can just go ahead and work on getting everything nice and tinned. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna use a little bit of no clean flux on there. Don't need all too much. And then we'll work on getting both of these points tinned. Excellent. And let's go ahead and get these wires wired in. So this is going to be start. I'm happy with that. And next is going to be select. There we go. Those are looking good. So I will go ahead and, you know, we can just clean that up while we're here, why not? 
So there we go, we have that cleaned up. Now I'm going to flip this over, and I think these two points are the only ones I am slightly confused by just on the orientation here. And I'll go ahead and reference what I'm looking at again. So I'll even show it here, like this is the actual, you know, what I'm working with, and this is it here on the phone itself. This is just from the eBay listing that I'm looking at. Uh, so even, not trying to move that all around, but kind of on all of this here, it looks like, yeah, we would just need a power wire right there. And then this sensor is the one that's kind of throwing me off a little bit. So it looks like it would kind of just go on like that, which I haven't messed with that before. Just kind of tack it on. And it looks like both sides here are the same, like front and back, so it will go on either way. But it needs to just go into this orientation. So let's go ahead and work on that. Yet again. I'm going to go ahead, dab a little bit of flux on both of those. Go ahead, tin that, tin that here, make a little bit more. All right. Cool. And this one's looking a little cold, so. There we go. All right, that's all looking better. Awesome. So what we can do is this is just going to be a simple black wire for power. We'll go ahead and get this one in. I actually still don't really like my power one here. So I'm going to go in here, just touch up on this one more time. So here we go, just going to come in here, hit this, get all soldered in. That's looking good, all right, cool. And now for this guy here, we're going to do the as about the exact same. Once again, I haven't messed with one of these before, so this is interesting to me. I'm almost wondering if I should even kinda tin this, get some solder on it as well too, just to make it flow easier, because why not? So I'll go ahead and do that. There we go. And let's go ahead and get this soldered in. All right. That one kind of goes on like a like a quick solder board in a way. So cool. I think uh, on this ribbon itself, we have all that done. So yeah, it's just those four points. Let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. So here we go yet again. This is going to be how this side is looking right here. I think that's all okay. Awesome. I don't want to give a full review of, you know, the difficulty of this yet until the end here once we make sure all of it is working. So we'll see how it's going, but so far it doesn't seem all too bad. So awesome. I think we can go ahead and start taking part of the console here now that we have all of this work done outside of the console. Oh, and it looks like quite invisible. We also got this little plastic piece right here that we're going to be using later on. So that is very good to have on hand. Since this is a Nintendo system, we will need a tri-wing screwdriver. So let's go ahead and get this thing removed. The screws here were a little bit weird to pull out, so it's kind of like, you know, you're kind of fully unscrewing it and the last little bit you kind of just have to unscrew just properly or apply some force to it, but I end up getting all those out. So we've now removed the back of this. So here we go, we're actually getting to the guts itself. Now it looks like we're going to have to switch over to a Phillips head. It's going to be one, two, three right here. Let's get to all of these. Hmm. So it looks like that's not all too bad then. It's six screws to get inside the console, and then once you're inside, there's just another three screws, so nothing too terrible. Now, right here up top, looks like we have this here, these two tabs for our screen. 
So it looks like if I can kind of use my thumbnails to get these undone. There we go. All right. I'm gently going to remove that here. There we go. All right. So that has been removed from that itself. There we go. Let me also go ahead, get rid of this piece. Is there any other pieces here? No, the volume rocker is actually on there. The link cable port is on there itself. Uh, this right here, hold on for the IR sensor. It looks like the IR sensor is actually, uh, no, that's on the case itself. Again, if it seems like I've never been in one of these, it's because I've never been in one of these. So that's why I'm kind of just double, triple checking everything. But I think we're good here now. So there we go. I was a little bit worried about that, but actually that came off pretty easily. Thank goodness. And you know what I will say, it looks like the seller refurbished the outside of the system, but they clearly didn't refurbish the inside because look at how dirty that speaker is. You're kind of seeing this right here and they didn't put new pads on or anything for this. So it's okay. Um, I'll go ahead, you know, the, the new pads for the A, B start and select buttons. I'll go ahead and install those on here. So it will be even nicer than before. That would be really cool. But we have these components right here. So I'm going to kind of put this back over there. Just keep everything on hand and we should be okay to continue on. I'm not going to be using these, not going to be using these. So those will no longer be needed. Let's see if we can do a little bit of cleanup around here, but this right here is the console itself. Like this is uh, the heart of everything. It's real cool. Oh, and look at that. That is grimy. That is uh, all the years of Pokemon buildup that gets inside that or on top of that speaker, I suppose, but gets inside the system regardless. So yeah, this will uh, get a nice good cleaning. So there we go. That's all looking pretty good here, thankfully. Uh, now I will say there is some work that we're still going to have to do. So I know, for example, uh, I believe to our C point here on the on off switch, we're going to have to solder to power right there. Uh, that sensor is kind of going to be going over. And then on the flip side here, I believe it's points P12 and P13 for select and start respectively that we're going to need to get wired up. So all together, just, you know, three points on the actual console itself, which is not bad. Now let's see if this shell actually got pre-trimmed. So I'm going to put the console away for a bit. Let's check this out here. So we have actually fresh new buttons and everything in here as well too. That's real nice. So I don't even, I think I'll just go with all new everything on this. Why not? And back here, take a look at it. Actually, yes, looks like that is all accurate. So it looks like here there's a few 3D printed pieces which are needed for this. And there's also um, everything here has been trimmed out. So you can see even let's just like do like a quick comparison. It's kind of just these parts. So like this right here, all got like this got trimmed out. This got trimmed up here, got trimmed here, got trimmed. And you need to trim those because you need to install the bigger screen in there. Uh, but then there's this like kind of 3D printed piece or bracket, um, several different pieces that go in there. It looks like there's this guy as well too, which we're gonna figure out where the hell that's going to be going. Um, but either way, yeah, I don't have to do any manual installs on this. So that's looking good. Now, one thing I'm going to do real quick, kind of just as a best practice it's recommending is I'm actually going to do a screen test here. So I'm going to temporarily Put this all back in this is with the old case here i'm going to put the batteries here in momentarily um, but i am going to 
get the screen installed itself. So let's go ahead and work on that. Let's get this screen. So it looks like here, since this is going to be the install practice, it's supposed to go all in like this. Go ahead and get that disconnected. Going to install our ribbon. Fits in there nice and snug. Then let's get this in. So something like that is going to work, all right, because it's going to be there. We're going to have to wrap it all around. And let's go ahead and get this all in. Now, even though I'm working on getting this installed here, I feel like we're going to need power on this. So we have all that. I am just going to go ahead and work on getting this point soldered in, because why not? So this is going to go right there to our C point. There we go. So that was thankfully pretty easy right there. I think we're all done with the power itself. I'm gonna turn off my iron for now, get this cleaned up, and we will continue with the screen test. I now need to see how this is going to get installed here. There we go. So kind of just popped it in place like so, and it just kind of connects in there. So now we're going to need to get the batteries in here. Let me kind of do this off camera slightly. Just still trying to be gentle with everything, but you know how it can go. There's that, just trying to really be careful with the screen. And I suppose we can give this a shot here. So let's see. There we go. Hey, would you look at that? Wow, all right. So the screen's looking beautiful so far. Everything's going. That's great. That's looking real good. Huh, awesome. Okay. I've never seen the Game Boy Color look this good on like, you know, a Game Boy Color screen. So this is real nice. I'll even get a picture of this as well too. Just have to share this. <laughs> so good news is I he nearly had a heart attack just because I did not get that all connected properly, or I guess I wasn't turning it on 100% properly. But the good news is that the screen is working, so I am not at all worried about that. We'll go ahead and just get these uh, batteries removed and continue with our install. Now, oh boy, I will need to get this disconnected. So there we go, very gently disconnect that. We're okay there. All right. Oh boy. And let me also pull out the cartridge because we're not going to need that. And see where we're going now. So I believe here at this point, we can grab this guy. <laughs> uh, we're not going to need the LED just because we have that on the console itself. Now, here we go. How is this going to stick on? Oh, all right. Let's go ahead and just get this stuck on here. So first of all, I think we can kind of just take this all off like so. Oh, okay. 
it's going to want us to remove this middle portion here as well. <laughs> there we go. This is going to be our trash. So we're going to get this installed. Thankfully, it is all notched very well. So awesome. Okay, that's looking good. <laughs> Very cool. Next up, I suppose we can get on... Well, we'll start getting the screen in here. We're not going to need anything up at the top. Let me double check this. So it looks like we do have one reason to use the new pieces here. Uh, first of all, with this little black piece, just because of how this shell's been modified, it doesn't go in there as well, but... We do have a gray piece to replace that. It looks like this is what we're going to need to get installed here. So let me just see which orientation it goes. There's that way, or I'm pretty sure the first way was the way that I did it correctly. But let me double check. Actually, no, this one seems to fit in there much more snug and easier. So there we go, we got that piece installed in. Now, I think at this point we are ready to install the screen here so to do this we are going to have to remove the protector here very gently oh boy okay oh this is not going to be fun all right okay cool just initially that was scary <laughs> that screen is looking lovely don't touch don't touch don't touch and there we go. It installs, hopefully, snug in there. I would hope so. There we go. All right, so I'm not gonna apply, really, I don't wanna apply pressure right there, but I kinda just had to loosen this bottom piece right here of the 3D printed bracket, kinda get the screen in there and put it up top. So I think that's looking fine. That should be all good. We should be able to use the, where was it? There should be some insulation that comes with it. Yes, actually, it's going to be this right here. So that's kind of just going to, actually that's perfect. I can just feel it right there. It's gonna make it nice and flush. And that should be all good. Let's just see the best way to get this on. Maybe something like that. But even while I'm getting all that figured out, I'm going to grab these new pieces here. So first of all, we have ourselves a nice new D-pad. We're going to be using this uh, later on. That's going to be our power. We have A and B buttons. Should go, let's see, A. B. Excellent. Do I have start? Okay. I forgot that the uh, start and select are kind of just like gummy in a way. So here we go. We've got A and B buttons that are going to plop on here. We've got these two. All right. That's all looking good and then finally start and select all right so there we go that's actually how the game boy is going to look afterwards i think that's looking pretty nice so far very good. Uh, power switch will go right there. That's all going to be okay. All right, let's get this all, let's get the rest of this here figured out. All right, so I got the screen connected here. Um, Let's go ahead and work on getting these wires soldered in as well. 
So start should go to P13, select should go to P12. I can double check that, but I think we'll be good there. All right, so those two are looking good. Um, cool. Let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. And optimally, that should be the last bit of soldering that we should need to do on this console here. Uh, just because the little like flex cable, I guess for the light sensor, I had attached already. The power has already been soldered on. And the last two were just the two buttons right here for start and select, which should be all good to go. All right, so just took a little bit of a break here just to get some time away from this because I found myself in a good stopping spot. And I was wondering about the insulation here. Now, earlier I had kind of looked at this right here and I was saying, oh, this will work because it's like perfectly flush, but no, that's still not going to work for what we're doing. The back here, is just fine. I'm not worried about it. There's nothing we really need to worry about here, um, but it's going to be all these components touching the actual Game Boy console itself. Well, it seems that I, I was just looking at the, what is it, um, the listing yet again, and it seems like they did have a way of insulating this, or they don't actually insulate this right here. They insulate it on the console itself, which the method they end up using is just some captain tape right up here. You don't want to block the actual sensors, but here, here, here. So that's what I'm going to do on the actual console itself. I'm just going to use a few strips of captain tape uh, just so we don't mess with anything here. So there we go, we have it all taped up. I know I used more than I needed to, but I'd use, I'd rather use a little bit more than, you know, not enough on here. So now let's see how we're going to be getting this all back together. I know I made this a little bit harder on myself. Uh, could have been a little bit easier on this, but it's all good. Don't mind all too much. So I guess, how are we going to do this? I'm gonna do something like that here. So I just got the ribbon cable reconnected, um, got all the buttons in place. That should all be well and good here. Now I'm just more wondering with the wires because we have the two wires installed here that we need. Not all too worried about that. Just don't want to make sure that we're not going to, you know, puncture them or anything else. But it seems like they can just go in like that. The only thing is this piece right here, I haven't seen like anything on what exactly to do with this. So I'm kind of at I'm kind of at a loss for that. But everything else seems to kind of fit and go wherever it all needs to. Um got that reconnected. Should be able to kind of plop this in place if I can. So what I'd like to do here is I'd actually like to perform one final test. Uh, I'm just going to take the original, well not the original, but the new shell right here. Everything's looking good for the most part. Kind of just get it in place here. I'm not going to screw anything down just yet, but we're going to kind of plop this all in and I guess just use pressure. 
to do this if that works out. So there we go, something like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Pokemon. There we go, that will at least keep it closed. Oh, uh, batteries, 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 here they are. And oh, you know what, I just realized I totally forgot to put in the switch. So actually there we, yo, look at that. Well, it's all working. Cool. All right, that's all good so far. So I'll go ahead, turn that off and we can continue with reinstalling the rest of this here. Now, one thing I am admittedly kind of confused with here is still even in regards to this, let me remove this, there we go. It looks like these two were for the comms port right here, which used to just be black. This is now kind of more of a solid piece right here. And I would think logically, like maybe this would go in, do something, but I still haven't seen like anything or any like place that makes sense on where to put this. I just don't get it. So um, again, I'm thinking this is for the sensor itself as well. But even in documentation I've seen, it looks like they kind of just like put it right here. So, that's kind of my only confusion on this. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and continue on, just to see what's going on. Now, one thing here, I I guess this is the only issue with these screws. Um, well, the not the screws, but the little screwdrivers that they gave me. These are fine for the original shell, you know, if it's worn and used and everything. On the new one, I just noticed I couldn't get enough grip when installing these, so. That's why I end up using my trusty iFixit toolkit here to do the reinstallation. Again, we're gonna do this with, you know, nice fresh screws and we should be all okay here. So we got this, let's go ahead and do the other two. All right, just had to get the power switch in there because we're about ready to close it up, so. Again, I'm, I mean, I'm happy with how everything is looking on this. This is all good, all okay. I'm actually gonna take one more photo of this as well too, just kinda to photograph my work because I am happy with that. However, I don't know, just kind of a weird kit here. Um, there's just not any like direct documentation I guess I've really seen on some of this. So that's why it's a little bit confusing here. So I'll see if we can kinda get it there. Changed up a little bit, we'll see. That's still kind of the confusing part, just because on this exact kit, documentation's been kind of odd to find. Um, but either way, looks like we have everything else wired up. We have all the other buttons and such there. So I'm going to bring this all down, make sure we're good. Yep. Okay, I can turn it on and off. Looks like we have the DC 12 volt, although that's, well, DC 3 volt, excuse me, although that's never gonna get used. Headphones, I doubt that's gonna get used. Extension, volume, we have all of that, awesome. So let's work on getting the other screws back in. You know, one of the final touches here as well, I am going to plop this on. It's going to be, they gave me a Game Boy Color sticker. So I'm just going to apply this here. Uh, that works out. And there we go. Game Boy Color sticker around the back. Now, very last thing. Let's see if we can actually Enjoy this now. I'm going to plop those all in. Get that right there. Plug in my Pokemon yet again. Turn it on. Please work. Hey! Look at that. Let's see how... Okay, volume down. That's so weird actually. It's like you turn it up to turn the volume down and you turn it down to turn the volume up. That's, that's so odd to me. <laughs> now, I do notice if I kind of look down at it at this angle, you do see the red right there. So if you're like looking at this, you know, if you're looking at it directly, 
it's fine, but if you're looking at it kind of like an angle, you do see the red bottom of the screen right there. But so far, this is cool. All right. I think that's all good. Awesome. And I guess, yeah, then if you're looking at it like from this angle, it's fine. I'm thinking it even looks like the top's like a tiny bit cut off there, but that was kind of just how it all fit in place. That's how it all went there, so it's kind of what we're working with. But overall, I'm all right with this so far. This is looking good. This is like a fresh, brand new looking Game Boy. I'm not like cleaning this here on purpose because I'm going to, you know, like clean it properly and stuff. But, you know, one thing I also noticed when I was looking at all this here is I noticed that not here. Actually, no, I think that's it. Yeah, right here. You can put like a charm or, you know, your keychain or something there. And I'm wanting to know if anybody ever used this. That's what I'm curious about. All right, so just wrapping up right here, I'd say this is all good to go. And I did want to show you all, I actually kind of figured out what was going on with the touch sensor. That thing is weird. I'll be honest, I'm not crazy about this. I might have said earlier that this has an on-screen display and I flubbed on there. I guess there's two versions of this. One of them has an on-screen display, um, but it doesn't have as big of a screen. So I did opt for the bigger screen, uh, but without the on-screen on, on display. However, um, I ended up kind of moving, if you all notice, the ribbon as opposed to putting it like here. I kind of put it right over here. So there's seven screen settings on there. And just to show you all, I'm going to turn this on. And this is what freaked me out because I looked at this. I was like, did this thing like just start breaking or what? I was using it a little bit off camera, but no. So that's number one. Let's see. I really have to like tap this thing. Come on. Okay, so I have to get it in like just the right angle here, um, but here we go. So that's like the lowest level, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. Well, you saw it right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the brightest it goes. And that is a, uh, hmm. I'm not super crazy about the touch sensor on there, and I know there's some control you could do with the buttons on here, but either way, that's how that works, so I think this will probably just be best to put it at the brightest. I was kind of confused, though. I was very concerned for a little bit because, like, I went around, and I just saw it was, like, at this point, like, hold on. I kind of, like, let it run for a bit, but I think I tapped it a few times, and it was looking like this, and I'm just like, oh, did I just, like, break this thing? Is it, like... Is it running out of batteries? Is it maybe like the more that I'm using it that the screen is dying on this? Like it better not be, I just installed this. But no, it's looking all good. And I'd say at the maximum brightness, it looks vibrant, it looks great, it looks beautiful. Just look at that. So this is it overall. This is the mod that we installed for the Game Boy Color. Now my thoughts on it overall, I would say uh, I, I did want to not roll and say anything about the difficulty until I was done and had it successfully installed, but the difficulty on this, I'd say, is pretty easy. If you've never worked on a Game Boy Color much like me, um, it is six tri-wing screws to get into the system, three, tr three uh, Phillips head screws once you're inside the system, so it's nine screws to take apart the entire console right there. Um, if you are okay with a soldering iron right here, um, I'd say if you're if you don't trust your soldering, if you're not good with it, you might want to have a friend or someone else do this for you. But if you're okay with soldering, if you feel like if you've watched this video and you feel like it's something you can do, you can probably pull it off. The only thing that caught me off guard, I would say, is the start and select buttons, the test pads that you have to solder to. Those test pads were a little bit smaller than I was expecting, a tiny bit smaller. And I know you might be saying, okay, dude, everything is small here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know but the test pads are just a tiny bit smaller than I was expecting. That's what caught me off guard, but that's maybe the only difficult thing on here, I would say. Um, aside from that, I already got the pre-trimmed version of this kit, so I took the opportunity to reshell this. Now, because it was pre-trimmed, I did not have to use a Dremel, I didn't have to use flush cutters, I didn't have to file anything down. Everything is looking all good. Like, I'm pretty happy with it. Also, I, I hope that you all can give some respect right here. This entire time, I've been using this Pokemon Yellow cartridge, which I don't even think I've used it for years. And every time, like, just to show you all, 
I pop in the cartridge. I'm not blowing on it, not cleaning it or anything. The console is clean. The cartridge is clean. Turn this thing on. There we go. And look at that. Shows the Nintendo logo, it boots up just fine. So there's gotta be some respect for that. However, in regards to this, I'd say for the mod kit, which included all the new screws, the new buttons, the new, uh, you know, rubber pieces right here, pretty much everything physical all new, except for the console itself, because you have to bring your own console and screen. Well, you know, include a new screen. But the entire reshell kit and everything was about $80, I would say. So that's all good. I'm really happy with this. I hope she is as well, too. So I hope that this is, you know, better than the Game Boy that she ended up getting stolen. And I know for a fact this one is not going to get stolen. This one shouldn't be going anywhere. But I am actually, you know what? In all honesty, I'm actually jealous now. I'm just like, I mean, I had a Game Boy Advance. I never had an original Game Boy or a Game Boy Color. But I'm just like, I want one of these now. I want to get one of these. I want to mod this myself, like mod another one, and I want to have one of these. This is really cool. So I am going to get her a few games for it, and I'm also going to be, you know, pairing up an EverDrive with this as well, too, so she can play games on that as well and just, you know, have all of her games that she has on a, you know, flash cart and play them that way. But that is about it for this video. Overall, I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all got to maybe learn something and just get entertained from this overall. But... I'd say I'm pretty happy with this overall here. Now, if you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. As I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.